Hello, welcome to today's edition of Friday Facts and Fun. Today I want to talk about cybersecurity. And cybersecurity is a very broad field, but I wanted to tell you about a few resources and things that the Honda Library has to help you learn about cybersecurity. And then we will actually start a part of the program for the seniors. So cybersecurity is protecting our computers, devices, phones, all of those things from being hacked or fished or invaded or having malware applied to them. So it's, it's really broad, but in a world where we're all connected through our devices, it's important knowledge. First, I wanna talk about the US Cyber Patriot Organization. And they have provided resources that allow our patrons to learn about cybersecurity. First, there's books for our children, for our earliest learners to learn. As soon as kids start using phones, maybe little, your little ones are viewing videos on your phone. You need to start teaching them safety. We have Sarah the Cyber Hero, and I've just ordered Ben the Cyber Protector. For our middle grade students, say ages the third through sixth grade, we have Journey Through the Unified Field. Now, it's not directly about cybersecurity, but it does talk about virtual reality and it does mention the coach of our Cyber Patriot team, our Cyber Owl team. So I've included that here. Next, for our high school students, we have a program through the Cyber Patriot organization. Cyber Patriots is an organization that was started through the U.S. Air Force they saw the need for people to learn about cybersecurity and develop this. Cyber Patriots is the division for the high school students. They compete in competitions and learn about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is one of the fastest growing employment fields. So this not only helps our high schoolers learn to protect themselves and their families, but it gives them a possibility for future employment. Tomorrow, January 23rd, our team will be competing in the national competition. Also, I hope you saw it, but last week in our Hondo paper, there was an article about our Cyber Owls team, and this is our newsletter, but they were mentioned in the, well, they had an actual interview in the national newsletter called Cyber Centennial. If you, if you get a chance, go read last week's Hondo Anvil Herald, and you can learn more about our high school team. Today, though, what I want to talk to you about is Cyber Generations, which is the Senior Citizen Cyber Safety Initiative. We have multiple copies of this self-paced guide and I'm going to work through this with people over the next few weeks. If you're interested in learning for yourself some of the things that you need to know to be safe online, come by, call us that you're here. We'll bring one out to you, and then you can have it. You can also download it from the Cyber Patriots website. But since we already have them printed, and now this is the, the previous edition, but there's really not that much changes. So we have these. Call us, come by and pick one up. And over the next few weeks, we're going to work through the various things. First, this week, I would like us to just be introduced, explain what it is, do the definition, why it's important, and those types of issues. Next week, we will work on password management. We will also, as we move on, look at common internet threats. 
internet scams and fraud, which are especially targeted towards seniors. And so maybe you, maybe you feel fairly confident, but what about your parents or grandparents? Do they know how to protect themselves? This will be a great way for them to learn what they need to do to be safe. And finally, we will talk about social media safety. Again, it's a great way to learn about scams and proper social media etiquette, all those things. Today, to start, I'm going to walk through really quickly the introduction. We'll go back to the definition. Cybersecurity is all the tools we use and actions we take to keep computers, networks, and information safe and available for those who need them, but unavailable for those who should not have them. It's important to be aware of the potential threat of cyber crimes because it affects us all. According to a report, cyber crime is one of the toughest challenges the world is facing today. And it is set up to cost us collectively up to six trillion dollars by this year. As I said, this was written, this is a 2018 version from the Air Force Association. So just simply going back to 2018, they projected six trillion dollars in cyber crimes. The cost of scams and lost information, you hear about data breaches, all of those things. So why is it important to be safe online? Well, we use computers, we use our mobile devices, and we use the internet for a lot of things in our day-to-day -day lives. More and more, you cannot apply for a job, access most government websites and benefits without being online. And even if you don't use a computer regularly, or even at all, it's still possible that your data is at risk. Everywhere you go that you have to give your information, doctors, insurance, financial institutions. You may not be online, but if those institutions have suffer a data breach, your information could still be out there shared. To explain this a little better, let's look at some myths about the internet. Myth number one, if you didn't put your information online, you're untraceable and therefore safe from intrusions. No, that is a myth. Publicly available government records, property tax records, court records, any organization or committee that you're a member of, these are all viable sources of per personal information. And yes, you can try to limit what you put out there, but in order for our economy, government, and us to function, you do have to share information with legitimate organizations. You just need to know that your information's there and that those organizations are, are doing what they can and should to protect our information. Myth number two is and that if you post anything online, it's only shared with your family and friends. So you can, particularly on your social media, say who can see what you post. But the internet is a mysterious place sometimes, and you never know where your information might end up. Even if you're being careful and you delete data that exposes personal information, it's always possible that that personal identifiable information has been copied and stored somewhere and can be accessed by criminals. And this is from the website atg.wa.gov slash internet hyphen safety hyphen seniors. So those two myths tell us that even though we're doing what we can, information might be out there that we don't want others to have. Right now, globally, one-third of all scams are targeting mobile transactions, with 81 million cyber attacks on financial institutions in the first half of 2018. 
27 million of those targeted the mobile channel. So the, the risk apply both to computers and to smartphones. I have people tell me all the time, I don't use a computer, but they have in their hand at the same time, a smartphone. Your smartphone is a miniature computer. And yes, it has data stored and you use it in a way that that data it can be accessed and you need to be safe. Okay, before we delve deeper into cybersecurity threats from our online activities, we need to be aware that there are also offline threats that are just as dangerous. Have you ever heard the term dumpster diving? In terms of cybersecurity, Dumpster diving is a practice used to salvage information that could be used to carry out a cyber attack. It's not just limited to searching through the trash for obvious clues like passwords and pins. Attackers can also use information like phone lists, calendars, and address book pages to carry out malicious activities. And don't put that information in the trash. Shred it. Make it difficult for people to access it. Shoulder surfing is the act of acquiring personal or private information through direct observation. Shoulder surfing involves looking over someone's shoulder to attain vital information while the victim's unaware. So if I'm sitting here and putting something in on my phone and someone is standing behind me, if I'm not careful, they can see what I'm entering. It is most likely to occur in a crowded place where you're using a computer, a smartphone, or ATM. So when you're using these devices, particularly in public, be aware of who's around you and do your best to hide or secure your information as you're using them. Other offline cyber protection acts are to secure your mobile devices. What are mobile devices? Those are the portable or handheld devices that have data or can connect to another device that has data. So that is our smartphone, a tablet, or the USB drives that maybe you've stored data on from your computer. What are the risks with these devices? First, they're easily stolen or simply lost. They're often not encrypted to protect them. They can be the targets of virus infections and they can be compromised through wireless access. The apps on them collect information. So how do we fix these things? Well, first, guard your devices. Keep them in a secure place. Be very careful not to lay them down or leave them somewhere. <laughs> it's silly, but my staff bought me this little purse that I carry all the time. So my smartphone is always with me. I keep it secured on my body. That way I'm not laying it down and losing it, which I did for a long time. I, I would walk around the library going, has anybody seen my phone? <laughs> so now, my phone is always with me. I know where it is and I never have to worry about somebody stealing it because it's protected. Next, set a strong password on your device. Make sure that you do the updates. If your phone or tablet says updates required, do them. Those updates often have something to do with a cybersecurity threat and they are the fixes that the either the device company or the security companies have found will guard against that threat. Make sure that you don't use open networks. Wi-Fi that is secured is better than Wi-Fi that is open because if it's an open network, you don't need a password to get on it. Hackers can access that network too and try to gather your information. Yes, sometimes it's good to have a, a network you can access easily, but just be aware that if you're on that network, 
others may be able to see what you're accessing. Next, let's talk about browser safety. So browsers are those apps, applications, software that we use to get to and navigate the internet. Include Microsoft, Firefox, Chrome, and there are others, but those are the major three. When you're, when you're using any browser, be sure that you're using pop-up blockers. Lots of cyber threats come through clicking on something that pops up on your screen. So the fewer things that pop up, the safer you are. Use a pop-up blocker to prevent those unwanted pop-ups. Be sure on your computer or tablet that you're using the automated updates. Again, those updates generally have something to do with protecting you, you and your information. When you're using a website for anything that is needs to be secured, make sure the website has an S after the HTTP. So when I go to my bank's site, I don't want to use it if it just says HTTP. It needs to say HTTPS. They have encrypted the information. That S is showing me that it's safer. They also generally have a little padlock in the address bar showing that that information is locked and secure. So most of the browsers do have built-in security features to keep you secure but you need to make sure they're up to date and turned on. They also check sites before you visit to see if it might be a scam and infected with malicious software. Browsers can also scan a, a URL for known spoofs. That's why reporting spoofs to a company is important. So when you go to a site, you want to look at, so when I Google something and I pull it up, I can hover my mouse over it before I open it to make sure that it is a good URL. Okay, when you go to sites, always ask yourself, is this a safe site? So look for the secure sites. Again, they'll have an S after the HTTP. They'll have a padlock in the browser address bar and they'll have a green background or green text. Make sure that you look for the correct spelling. Beware of spoofs. And I can show you, for example, this Bank of America, the O's capitalized, that's not. Misspellings are a good sign that it's not a legitimate site. There are site checkers that can check for you. Getlinkinfo.com is one and it will tell you about the site and whether it's good, bad, whether it's safe. Finally this week let's remember to protect our personal identifiable information or PII. PII is any data that could potentially be used to identify a particular person. This is first name or initial and last name, your social security number, your driver's license or state ID card number, passport number, credit card number, your security questions answers, passwords, fingerprints, medical information, health insurance information. This comes from lifelock.com. So why is it important to safeguard our PII. Nowadays, we hear the terms data breach tossed around a lot. That's because data breaches at big and small companies have become an everyday affair, unfortunately. So when an organization suffers a data breach, an important concern is whether the attackers have gained access to the personal data of the customers who do business with the concerned company. Exposed PII can be sold on the dark web and used to commit identity theft, putting the breach victims at risk. The Equifax data breach in 2017 exposed the social security numbers, 
of 146 million people and the names and dates of birth of 147 million people. Once these cyber criminals have some of this information, they will then look to gather enough other information that they can create a, your identity and steal your identity. This story comes from marketwatch.com and it was the September 7th, 2018 story on the Equifax data breach. So that is our introduction to the importance of cybersecurity. Next week, we will look at password man management.